What's going on YouTube? This is Ultima Device Vids, and this is Tweak Recap. And as always, I'm going to be showing you guys five great CD tweaks that are compatible with the latest version of iOS that is capable of running a jailbreak. In this case, it's iOS 8.1.2, and I have some really cool tweaks to show you guys in this video, so let's get right into it. And the first tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called App Box. It's available in Cydia for $1.50. And what this tweak allows you to do is put your favorite applications right on your lock screen. So, of course, normally in iOS, if you swipe from left to right, of course, you'll have your passcode. And you still do with this tweak, as you can see. However, if we swipe the other way, so from right to left, as you can see, we have this other view. And we have the ability to launch any application from here. You could configure what apps show up here inside the settings app. So, let's say I were to tap on the notes app. As you can see, because I do have a passcode on my device, I need to enter the passcode. And then it's going to open up the notes app. And of course, as soon as I finished entering my passcode, it's going to take me right into the application that I tapped on, which in this case was the Notes app. And of course, if you didn't have a passcode, it would just go straight to the application that you tapped on. Now, I'm just going to go back to the lock screen. There's some more things I want to show you. So let's just go back over here. For certain applications, there are subviews. So for example, the Music app is one of them. And what that means is you're able to do tasks related to the application without actually opening the app. So, so if I were to tap and hold on the Music app as opposed to just tapping... As you can see, I have the ability to access my playlist, which is pretty cool, so I don't even have to open up the app. However, if I just tapped on the app, just like any other app, of course, it's going to prompt me for my passcode, and I could go into the full application. So now I'm just going to go into the settings, and I'll show you some of the things that you could do with the settings for this tweak. So let's go into the settings here, and we'll scroll all the way down until we see app box and go in there. And of course, you will need to configure the apps that you want to use with this tweak, and you can do that inside the app section right here. However, the first thing that we see is the ability to enable or disable a tweak, as you can see at the top right there. And then we have apps, and we can go in here. And, of course, if we go into apps, you have the ability to, again, touch, toggle on and off what shows. So, basically, how you do that is you just drag these little handles just like this, as you can see, up and down into the disabled and enabled sections. So, again, you just tap and hold like this. You can drag them down and up. You can scroll through all the applications on your device, just like this, as you can see. Now, if we just go back to the lock screen, the changes that we made will automatically take an effect, as you can see right here. Now, the customization for this tweak is absolutely insane. As you can see, we have tons and tons of settings inside here, just tons of stuff that you can configure to your liking. And I'm not going to go over all that with you because, again, you could get it to your exact liking as soon as you actually install the tweak, but there is various useful things. Something I do want to show you is the lock sleep dip timer, which is actually pretty cool. This is something that I definitely find important with the tweak and it basically allows you to modify how long your screen is going to stay awake when you're on the app box section of your lock screen so of course by default when you're on your lock screen your screen will dim pretty quickly after you just wait so if you don't know what i'm talking about so if i just click the home button on any device basically pretty soon after i press the button the screen will go to sleep and of course when you're using app box because you're actually interacting with something you may want to make that a little bit longer so you could do that right here with lock sleep timer as you can see right here if we go in here we could choose between 5 10 15 20 30 60 seconds and never as well if you want to keep it awake until you actually do something and you have the ability to disable this for app views that was what i showed you earlier those that little sub view when we tapped and hold tapped and hold id i don't know how you say that but but as you can see right here, when we're in this view, you could disable it or enable it for that particular circumstance. And just one more thing I want to show you in the settings is the app view section. As you can see right here, we have the ability to select plugins. And there are a few. The one that I showed you was the playlist one at the top here. There's also contacts, social, and notes. So, of course, again, you could toggle on which one of these will work. I have them all enabled, but you could just drag them down using the same kind of method that I showed you earlier like this. From the disabled into enabled, enabled to disabled, whatever you want to do. And this is AppBox. It's a pretty cool tweak. Again, it allows you to access the applications that you want to get to on your lock screen very fast. It's available for $1.50 once again. And the next tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called Convergence. It's available in Cydia for $2.50. However, this is a beta version of it compatible with iOS 8.x. You know, the previous version was only compatible with iOS 7.x, and there is a beta version available on a special city repo that does work with iOS 8, and I personally have not experienced any issues with this. However, your experience may vary, so just proceed with caution with this. You, know, you may experience bugs here and there, a little weirdities or oddities, so just be prepared for that if you're going to install this. And again, in order to install it, you will need to add a special city repository. I'll be sure to put the repository down below in the description so you can add it to Cydia to install this new beta version of Convergence. 
And if you haven't heard of this tweak, what it does is completely replaces your lock screen with a completely new interface, a completely new, innovative, you know, take on the lock screen. So it's a completely different style, everything like that. So here it is. As you can see, it looks very different. And as you can see, we just slide up like this, and here's our passcode. Now, when I first saw this back when it was released in iOS 7, so back on the iOS 7 jailbreak, the first thing I thought when I saw it is this looks like something Apple would do, something like another version of iOS. Just the way that it looks and how smooth it is and just kind of that subtle change, but that nice change. It just really looks good. Just particularly the sliding up animation for the passcode looks really nice. We also have, as you can see, these little circles throughout the screen. So there's two on the bottom, one on the top. The top is for your widgets. And as you can see right here, we have a calendar widget and a weather widget right here on the lock screen. If we could just slide that right back up right there. Very smooth animations with this tweak, as you can see. Just works very well. If we slide from the left to the right right here, as you can see on this circle, we have some toggles right here. So as you can see right there, we also have brightness at the bottom. There you go, just like that. Very smooth. We could just slide back. And you don't actually have to tap right on the little circle. As you can see, you could just swipe from either side of the display. And you'll notice that the time up there, as you can see, very smooth how the date just disappears like that. And the other side is the camera. So as you can see right there, you just slide over there, and it'll open up your camera application. So it does def um, replace the lock screen, so that's why it has to add these things. So for control center, the replacement are, is these toggles, and of course the camera grabber, the camera over here, and notifications will just appear right here in the middle if you get them. Now let's just go ahead and slide up here, and I'll put in my passcode. And just before I do that, I want to show you how smooth these button presses are. As you can see right here, just very smooth. And when I get the passcode wrong, as you can see right there, how it has that nice little wiggle animation just like that. Very, very smooth animations throughout this tweak. Very impressive. But I'm just going to go ahead and put in the last digit of my passcode. And you're going to notice when I do that, that the animation is slightly slower than it normally is. As you saw right there, there's the split second when it was not really on the convergence interface or the home screen. That's the only thing that I don't like about this tweak. The animation is just a little bit slower. And something else I want to let you guys know about the passcode is if you're experiencing the issue when your passcode just doesn't recognize, you put it in and it just and it's the right one and it just continues to refuse it, acting like it's the wrong one, that is an issue that I've heard from some other people using this tweak. If you experience that, all you have to do is reboot your device or respring your device. So if you have an activator gesture set to respring like I do, for example, I have it set. So if I press both volume buttons at the same time, my device will respring. You could do that. Or you could just completely turn off your device, hold down the power button like this, slide to power off, back on, then the issue will be resolved. Just wanted to let you know about that. I'm not sure why that is, if it's a bug or conflict or something like that, but again, that's how you get around it. And now I'm going to show you some of the settings for convergence. So if you go into settings on your device and scroll down until you see convergence, you could go in there. Of course, at the top here, we have the ability to enable or disable the tweak. And there are some other options down here. As you can see, there's just tons of things you can configure, which is really good. And something that I like in these settings is the ability to change the theme. There's four themes, as you can see right here. Here's the default one, and I'll be going over those in just a second. Something else that's really nice is that you have the ability to control the blur. So you may have noticed that the convergence interface on the lock screen is a lot blurrier than the normal lock screen interface. As you can see right here, you, know, you can actually make out the wallpaper in normal iOS. However, with convergence, you can't really make it out. And of course, in iOS, if you slide to unlock for the passcode screen, then it blurs. But with convergence, it's like this, this blurred view all the time. And to customize the blur, you just go into the background setting inside of the convergence setting. So just go into background, and here's the blur. You have the ability to toggle it. I'm just going to move it down just a little bit, make it less blurry. Then we'll go to our lock screen, and you'll notice that it has taken effect, as you can see right there. It's actually pretty cool like this. You know, it's not too blurry, but it still has that nice blur effect. So... Again, yeah, you can customize that to your liking. I really do like this particular um, mode, this particular amount of blur. I think it looks really nice. And now I just want to go into the theme section, and I'll change it to the charcoal theme. And now that we've done that, let's go back to our lock screen. And as you can see right here, the theme is slightly different. Something that you'll notice right off the bat is the little knob here is a different color. And if we slide up, just the overall interface is tweaked just very slightly, just some of the colors are changed. And if we go over to our toggles here, again, as you can see, just the colors are changed. It's pretty much the same exact interface, however, again, the colors are changed. Let's just unlock here, and we'll just go back into theme, and then I'll show you the next one, which is conceptual. So we'll check that one, go to our lock screen here, 
and as you can see this one is quite different as you can see the, the actual icons here are again a different icon it's not just something like a subtle color change there we go there's our passcode screen that's pretty much the same and if we slide over we have our toggles again most of this stuff is pretty much the same however the brightness slider as you can see as opposed to having the little circle there we now have this uh, little dash here as the slider so we could again control our brightness with this and of course again all these little arrows uh, as opposed to the dials which we got before the dials and the circles and the default was the one that I was showing you earlier so I'm just gonna skip that one and go straight on to thin so now that we have thin enabled I'm just gonna go back to the lock screen I just want to show you all these themes so here's thin again this this one has some different icons as well I really do like this one I like how it has these little um, a little bit less um, I don't know, strange looking ones because the conceptual one was definitely a little bit strange. I like how this still retains that circular shape, which is found in the default theme as well. But of course, it just makes it a little bit different as opposed to having color. It's just kind of see through a little bit more skeleton like. So going over to the toggles here, again, pretty much the same except for the little slider here. As opposed to it being just a dial, it's just a circle again with a blank inside there. So we have that. Let's just unlock again. Again, there's various settings you can configure down here, as you can see, widgets, toggles, album artwork being full screen, medium, you know, there's just tons of stuff you could do inside here. You can configure that all to your liking as soon as you install the tweak. Once again, it's called Convergence. It's a very, very nice, innovative replacement to the lock screen. Definitely looks good. It looks like something that Apple would implement themselves. So definitely go check this out if you like what you see. It's available in Cydia for $2.50, but again, you have to add a certain repo in order to install it, so it will work with the latest iOS 8 versions. Man, the next one I'm going to be showing you guys is called Round Dock, and you've been looking at it throughout this video. As you can see, it pretty much does exactly what it says. The dock down here is rounded off on the corners. You know, normally in iOS, as you can see, this is a device that doesn't have the tweak installed. You can see the dock extends all the way to the ends of the screen and isn't rounded. However, this makes it rounded, as you can see right here, and the rounded dock is found in OS X, so basically just in the Mac interface for your computer, and this just makes it match that, and it also just looks a little better in my opinion. The apps don't look cramped like you'd expect them to, so it just gives you that nice curved look, however it doesn't sacrifice any graphical appearance or practicality. There are no settings that configure, it just works, and again, it works very well, it gives your device that nice look of, again, what you'd expect in something like OS X, so basically the Mac interface. And if, even if you don't know what I'm talking about, it still looks nice if you ask me. Again, just having those rounded off corners in the dock, as you're seeing right now. Again, no settings to configure. It's available in Cydia for free. Definitely go check this one out, again, if you like what you see. In my opinion, it just looks a lot cleaner. And the next one I'm going to be showing you guys is called Predix. It's available in Cydia for $1.49. And what this tweak allows you to do is get some useful information regarding to your battery life. So, for example, if your device is not plugged in, not charging, this tweak will allow you to determine how long it's going to take for your device to completely go dead. And if it is plugged in, it is charging, it's going to allow you to determine how long it's going to take for the battery to become completely charged. And I have it set, so when I trouble tap my home button, I get this nice pop-up, as you can see right here. It tells me why my battery percentage at the top, and it says powering down in 6 hours, 11 minutes, and 1 second. So this is really pretty nice. Again, it allows you to determine how long it's going to take for your device's battery to die. Now, of course, right now, if I were to open up a game that contained a ton of graphics and were to play it for, like, several hours, obviously my battery would change, so this percentage would be inaccurate. But basically, I believe how this is working is it's due to your recent usage of your device, it's gathering this information. But again, it just gives you an idea of how long it's going to take for your device to charge or die. It's pretty accurate if you continue using your device as you have been lately. And to dismiss it, we just tap, as you can see, right in the middle or anywhere on the screen for that matter, when it's active just like this, and it goes away. And of course, to configure it, you will need to go into your settings and scroll all the way down until you do see predicts, and you want to go in there. Of course, make sure the tweak is enabled up at the top here. And activation methods is, again, how you get the tweak to actually show up. So you could go into activation methods. As you saw earlier, I currently have it set for a triple press of the home button. So when you triple press the home button, it's going to pop up. And you have the entire activator tweak at your disposal to choose, again, the action that you want for this tweak to uh, come into action. So next we have appearance, and then we have the ability to show the battery percentage, which is what I showed you earlier. 
Again, as you can see right there, it says the battery percentage is 74%, and it just changed as you just saw right there. So, again, it will adjust. So let's just go back into our settings here. And for the show battery percentage, if you have an iPhone or an iPad, as some of you probably know, you will have the ability to enable that by default in iOS. However, if you have an iPod Touch, which is actually the device that I'm demoing this tweak on right now, that actually isn't a feature by default, so that's just another plus. If you have an iPod Touch, you'll have the ability to get battery percentage with this tweak, which by default isn't a feature on the iPod Touch. And next up, we have background color and labels color. And as you can see right here, for background color, I have it set for translucent dark iOS 8. You can't have it set to any of these. There's also translucent light for iOS 8, which I'll change it to here. And next, we have labels color. And as you can see, underneath the labels color setting, it does say that you cannot change the labels color if you're using the translucent background, which is what I am right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show you, as you can see right here, that's what the transparent uh, background looks like in light mode. And in my opinion, that actually looks like it belongs there more than the dark one, because of course Control Center and Notification Center both have this kind of light blur effect to them. And if you have the tweak matching that, it looks really good in my opinion. So this is probably going to be the one that I'm going to be using. Let's just go back into settings here and... I do want to show you the labels color, so I'm going to change the background color from translucent to something else. Let's just say uh, red, and then we'll go back, and then we'll change the labels color. Let's change it to, let's say, brown. And now that we've done that, we can go back, and let's just go ahead and open up our interface here. And there you go. As you can see right there, the changes have taken an effect. Again, the background is red, and the text is brown. Now, the brown might be a little bit hard to see on camera, so I'm going to go back into settings here and change the label's color to something else. A little bit more visible, let's say... Um, how about blue? We'll go back here, and then we'll perform our gesture, and there you go, that's a little bit more visible. Again, as you can see, it is blue. So this is a very handy tweak, especially if you're into predicting when your device's battery is going to die or charge up. It just gives you some useful information on that if you're somebody who's always worried about that. Again, you can definitely go check this one out. It's called Predix. It's available in Cydia for $1.49. And the next tweak I'm going to be showing you guys is called Tage. It's available in Cydia for $1.99. However, it does have a three-day trial. And basically what it allows you to do is have various gestures on your device to do specific things. So, for example, I'll just start with the first one. The first one is having the ability to close an application just by swiping up from the bottom of your screen, just like that. As you can see, it closed the app without even using the home button. And again, I just swiped up just like this, as you can see from the bottom of the screen, and it allows me to, again, close the app. The next one is you have the ability to switch between applications in your app switcher, just by swiping on the side of the screen. So, for example, you can swipe either on the right or left-hand side of the screen, and it will switch to the application that's next in your app switcher. So, as you can see right here, right to the right of the Settings app in the app switcher is Notes. And because Notes is to the right in the app switcher, if I were to swipe from the right-hand side of the Settings app here, as you can see, it'll take me right to Notes. And the music was after that. So, as you can see right there, there, there I am right with music. So, again, I could just quickly swipe like this in between my applications. Now this is actually a feature on the iPad and it is a default feature just found in the settings app. You don't even have to jailbreak and install any tweaks and it's called multitasking gestures. However, it requires a four or five fingered swipe but of course on the iPhone and iPod touch you can just do it with one finger. And the next gesture is the ability to open up the app switcher quickly and you do that just by swiping up from the bottom middle of the screen then continuing to hold your finger there then it's going to open up the app switcher. Now, of course, if you swipe all the way up, it's going to close the app, but if you swipe up and hold, as you can see, the app switcher will come up. And just to let you know, for these gestures that require the bottom of the screen, you can still access the control center. Basically, what you do is you don't swipe up in the middle, and you don't swipe up from the side. You swipe up kind of in between the middle and the side. And the reason you don't want to swipe up from the side is because there's another gesture that I'm going to be showing you in a second that requires the side. So just swipe up right in the middle there. Here's our control center just like that, and it's from either side, again, in between the middle and the side, just like that. Now, the next gesture does require these bottom sides, and that's what I'm going to show you now. And this is called the Quick Switcher. It allows you to quickly cycle between apps. You just swipe up from either side on the bottom, just like this. Then you release, and it's going to cycle you between the applications in your app switcher, just like that. Now, it's a little bit weird in the way that it acts, how it kind of tracks your finger like this, as you can see. 
And when we release, it opens an app. But it is a quick way to cycle between, again, the applications in your app switcher. And next, I want to show you the lock gesture. And this allows you to lock your device by swiping on the status bar just like this. As you can see, across. And again, it locks the device. And as you saw right there, I swiped from right to left. It also works the other way from left to right, as you can see right there. And the next gesture is if we swipe down on any app card in our app switcher, as you can see, we have this menu. And we have the ability to quit all apps, quit background apps, or quit other apps. And what the quit other apps is, is basically it will kill all the other apps except for the app card that you swiped down on. So if I selected quit other apps, it would kill everything except for the settings app because that was what I just swiped down on. Or, of course, again, you could kill all apps or quit the background apps. So let's just go ahead and select quit all apps. And as you can see right there, it kills all the apps and returns me to the home screen just like that. Now, for the one that I showed you earlier that allows you to switch between applications by swiping on the side, there is a downside. And basically what it is is you can't use the swiping back gesture. So normally in iOS, you could swipe back like this to go back pages. But as you can see right here, it's trying to get me to multitask. So that's a downside to the... Uh, app switching mode. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about, basically an iOS on a device that doesn't have this tweak installed, as you can see, we could just swipe back like this to go back a page. However, again, with this tweak, just because of that particular option, you're not able to do this. But the good news is, inside settings, you could disable and enable certain portions of this tweak. So, for example, you could just disable that one gesture and still enjoy all the other great gestures. So, let's just scroll down to the settings app here and go into the page preferences. And as you can see right here, because I haven't officially purchased this tweak just yet, I'm still under the three-day trial. It's asking me if I want to buy. I'm just going to go ahead and select cancel because, again, I still have three days left in my trial because I downloaded this earlier today. Now, as you can see here, close app or activate switcher. You have the ability to enable or disable that particular portion of this tweak. Same thing with switch apps, which I am going to disable so I can still use my swiping back, as you can see right there. Let's just go back into Tage here. And then we have Quick Switcher, which is what I showed you again earlier. You could disable that. You can configure some things for that in depth. Then we have Lock Device. And next we have Keyboard Disable. So because when you have the keyboard up, it's kind of awkward to use some of these gestures. By default, the keyboard will disable these, some of those gestures. Again, and it says down here it will apply to Close App or App Switcher, Switch Apps, Quick Switcher, Lock Device, which is pretty much all of the gestures except for the Kill Background gesture. And for the kill background gesture, as you can see right here, we have the ability to choose what happens when you swipe down on the home page or any app page. Of course, you could have it show that menu, which is what I showed you earlier, or automatically do any of these things that it lists right there. And of course, kill for uh, the kill background, you have the ability to have it kill an app that's currently playing music or not kill an app that's currently playing music. You could also have a white list, so... For, it'll allow you to choose certain apps on your device that won't be killed even if you um, perform the kill all gesture. So you could scroll through all the apps on your device and just check off ones like that that you don't want them to be killed even when you perform your gesture. And there's various things inside the settings app that you could change, manipulate, just basically get this tweak working the exact way that you want it. Of course, you could experiment with all of that, get it working again the exact way that you want it to work. And that's all the tweaks that I'm going to be showing you guys in this video. I hope you liked it. I hope you found some good tweaks to install on your devices. And if you did, make sure to leave me a comment down below in the comment section. Let me know which one of these tweaks is your favorite. And also, of course, which ones you installed. And that's all for this video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.